Welcome to our Dunedin Highland Middle School open house. It is virtual this year and I welcome you all. Uh, thank you for joining us here in this format. Uh, unfortunately, we have to be in this format right now as we were discussing the possibility of doing a live open house. The thought of many of our classes having 22 to 25 students and then having the possibility of maybe two parents and even siblings come and join and add to the room. Uh, we just thought it'd be way too crowded under the current circumstances. So we, uh, I, I hope you understand the reason for the decision we made, uh, but we are, uh, we're happy to have you in this format. I'm happy to see so many of you online joining us. I'm Mr. Vassalo, I'm the principal. Um, so I'm gonna be giving a general pre presentation here about school processes and procedures in general, just some reminders and things that I have had in my phone calls and in my messages out. But again, just to reiterate while I have a captive audience, um, you can visit our website to, for links to live sessions with our teachers that'll be coming up at seven o'clock. Also there you will see pre-recorded videos from the teachers about their classroom processes. So you can view those. If you were here on campus for a live open house, you'd go through the teacher's classrooms and they would do the same speech over and over again, six or seven times. So instead we just had them do it once pre-recorded. You can listen to it. And then if you have questions, you can join the live links. All of that is on our website, so you can join them from the website. Um, and so this meeting is being recorded and I'll also post a link to this meeting as well as the PowerPoint so that you can access any of the links in the presentation. So looking at our campus, uh, refresh was a, a theme I used with our teachers because we really felt after being out for so many months in all the various modes of learning for the past 20 months to come back live, we really wanted to refresh our campus. We had an outstanding opportunity to uh, redo our campus with a paint job interior. I don't know if you've ever thought about the thought of painting the interior and all of the classrooms and hallways of a campus with all the books and things that are posted on a wall in a school campus it is quite an undertaking. Um, but we, we, we did that along with some signage program, um, some new signage for uh, campus expectations, as well as some inspirational quotes on the walls in the hallways. And it really refreshed our campus. I really wish we had an opportunity to show it off to you for you to be able to see it. Uh, we did have an opportunity during uh, Highlander Pride Day preschool that many of you came on campus and got to see, but it, it, it does feel so nice. It does feel like a newer campus to have the fresh paint on the walls. Here at Dunedin Island Middle School, I know you hear me talk about respect, excellence, and pride. That's part of our school mission and vision um, to have a respectful learning environment and excellence in education and pride in our school community. Those That is our motto and that is what we live by here. And I thank our students for working hard to exhibit that. Here at Dunedin Island Middle School, we do have two distinct programs. We have our Center for Gifted Studies, which is an application program for families in the north part of Pinellas County whose children are classified as gifted. And we also have our STEAM program, which is for our traditional students that come to us in North Clearwater and Dunedin. And so we welcome all of our school family to our open house. I did go over a little bit of this in the last Title I presentation, but again, uh, for grade level supervision, just so that you know who's who, our sixth grade assistant principal is Diana Dolan. Our sixth grade counselor is Courtney Northcutt. Our seventh grade gifted magnet coordinator is Joanna Bernal, and she's also the seventh grade AP. Our seventh grade counselor, I will update this before I post it, is Will Pena. Mr. Pena joined us after I made this slide in preschool with our teachers, so I apologize I didn't update that one. And then our eighth grade assistant principal is Jeanne Watson. Our eighth grade counselor is Lauren Poggioli, and they are a wonderful team. You can reach out to them if you need anything. Our office assignments upstairs in building three, we have Mrs. Yeasting, who is the eighth grade clerk working with Ms. Watson and Ms. Poggioli, as well as our literacy coach, Ms. Autry. In downstairs building three, we have Mrs. Herbert, our clerk, who works with Ms. Dolan and Ms. Northcutt, our counselor, as well as Mrs. Shaw, the MTSS coach. And in upstairs building two, we have Mrs. Carroll, who is the clerk in the seventh grade office, along with Ms. Bernal, our counselor, Mr. Pena, who again is unnamed on this slide. I apologize to Mr. Pena. And Mrs. Taylor, our gifted coordinator. I encourage you to like and follow our social media channels as we do celebrate our school community, our students, our parents, uh, and our uh, and our faculty quite frequently on our social media pages. There are many wonderful things going on at Dunedin Highland Middle School, and we want to make sure that you know about them and can help us in celebrating our school community. One of the things we celebrated recently is our, oh my goodness, I'm just noticing that I'm advancing slides and they're not advancing for you guys. My apologies. So let's take you back. I talked about CGS and STEAM. I talked about our counselors and our assistant principals. I talked about our office layouts.
And then I also talked about social media channels. So now I've caught up and I apologize that I did not have those slides advancing. I had some issues with Teams and PowerPoint not talking to one another, but now they are. So we are proud to announce that our PTA is a School of Excellence PTA for the 2020 through 2022 school years. Uh, through the coronavirus pandemic and up until today and ongoing, our PTA is small but extremely mighty, extremely resourceful, and we appreciate all that they have done to support our students and staff. Um, they, they have been so resourceful in finding ways to celebrate. Uh, this week we had chalk drawings welcoming us to school, as well as little apples telling our teachers that they are awesome to the core with peanut butter dip cups. Um, they have just done some really remarkable, wonderful things, and I'm so thankful to them. Uh, I have microphones muted during this presentation uh, so that we don't hear households, but I did want to uh, allow an opportunity for our PTA president, Mr. Hancock, to speak. And so I can unmute microphones um, and allow him to speak if you would like to just say a brief welcome. So I'm going to turn microphones back on. If you have a microphone, you can mute it with a little microphone up there in the corner. Mr. Hancock, are you on? I am, Mr. Vassallo. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Thanks for the uh, shout out to the PTA. Uh, we just appreciate the time and the collaboration with you. Thank you all who have joined the PTA. We look forward for an outstanding year. The Reflections program has just kicked off. So any skill that your student has, please use that. Please check out the school site and uh, join that program. Thank you, Mr. Vassallo. All right, and if you want to join, there's information on where to join. You can also hit the engagement tab on our website to learn more about PTA. I have the meeting dates there, and again, I will take this entire PowerPoint and post it to our school website afterwards, so you'll have access to this. Um, and here's a little picture showing some of the things the PTA has done so far. I showed you my little apple. Um, we also had the, the chalk drawings, and they also have set up a supply station in the office for teachers to take supplies and give them to students who don't have them. So uh, really remarkable, resourceful things so far, and they can do more if they have more of you join. So please, please join the PTA and help support our campus. Another outreach group that uh, we meet with regularly is our school advisory council um, and Florida school law requires that we have a school advisory council. They analyze relevant data to determine school uh, steps that we need to take as well as assisting in the development and implementation of our school improvement plan. And so the school advisory council meets weekly uh, meets monthly also the same nights as PTA and uh, I believe I also have Ms. Rita Sin, our SAC chair on. I don't want to put you on the spot, Ms. Sin, but if you'd like to say hi and do a little plug for SAC, you're more than welcome to do so. Just want to remind everybody that you're always welcome to come to SAC. You don't have to be an official part. It's part of the Florida Sunshine Laws. So everyone is invited to any of our meetings and we'd love to have you. Great, and thanks so much. I am going to uh, go ahead and I'm going to mute Mike's back so we don't have any any interruptions, but thank you both for joining us tonight. And uh, we do look forward to having help and input. So moving on, we're going to just talk about some things. Our school schedule here at school, our school hours are from 940 until 410. We provide supervision from 910 until 420 on a daily basis. I do notice there are a lot of students that are dropped off much earlier than 910 a.m. Um, and we, we do have some staff that arrive early, but they are not working on contract at that time. They are not providing supervision to students until that 9-10 time. If you're having trouble with care before and after school, I, I actually can give you two options. One is our R Club, which is a free program for all DHMS students. And they are here very early in the morning until well into the, uh, the evening hours. Um, and so information about our club is on our website. The other option is our extending extended learning programs, which I will talk about a little bit later. But starting at eight o'clock, we have extended learning programs uh, that include clubs that include help in math, help in reading or just general homework help. And so those are all available. Also, if you would like to have your student either stay before or after school, I'll talk about that a little bit more. And on a daily basis, we have seven periods with a four minute passing between classes. I do want to talk about transportation as well. I know that has been a major point of frustration for many parents and I uh, and I empathize with you, with all of you. Right now, the issue is that Pinellas County Schools is experiencing a driver shortage. It is something that we are experiencing in industries across our country. 
uh, with not having enough workers to fulfill all of the roles. And certainly that is something that we are struggling with as a school district and not just as a school district. I read about a district in another state that is called in the National Guard to drive uh, school buses to get kids to school. So it is a, a nationwide problem right now. We've had many buses that are late both in the morning and the afternoon. I've talked in our faculty meetings with teachers to make them aware of this and to make them uh, aware that I would like them to work with the students who have chronically late buses. Mrs. Watson is our transportation liaison, but just to explain to you how it works in some cases, we have some routes that are not covered at all. There's no driver assigned because there's no driver employed by Pinellas County Schools. So what is happening in many cases is that a driver will come and drop off our students in the morning for the, the bus ride route they're assigned to, and then they will go back out and pick up students that don't have a bus driver and bring those students to school. And that's what's causing them to be late. The same thing is happening in the afternoon. They'll pick up students, take them home, and then come back to our school and pick up more students. And that is the position we're in. If you know anyone with a CDL license who'd be interested in joining our team as Pinellas County Schools, uh, we would love to have more transportation workers. But right now, I, I have some parents who are asking me, you know, when will this be fixed? And it'll be fixed when we are able to find more drivers is, is the answer. I, I wish I had a better answer, but that is the uh, that, that is the reality we're living in right now. As far as arrival procedures, I lost some of that slide there. Let me see if I can fix it. No, nope, it's not going to show that white box. For some reason, it's not showing on Teams and it's showing on my screen. But uh, all students walking and riding to and from the school from the south and west side will need to enter the parking lot entrance on New York Avenue or through the front of the school. And then the white box should be saying that we want only bus riders in our bus lane. We don't want students riding their bikes through the bus area as the buses are not looking for bikes in the bus lane. Also want to let parents know that students need to walk their bike while, while they're on campus. Our students are doing a really good job of doing that this year. Also, we have crossing guards and crosswalks available. We want students using those crosswalks because as cars are coming in and out of the campus, it's very busy in the morning. We want the drivers that are driving on the roads and in our car circle to be able to see the students that are walking. So please use the crosswalk and also obey the instructions of our teachers that are out on duty in the morning. For our car riders, we want them to be dropped off in front of the trees in front of the school starting at 910. They can come in for breakfast at 920. The car riders will wait out front. Otherwise, if they're not breakfast eaters until the 935 bell and then go straight to class. Some students parents might want to drop them off in the back of the school, which they can also start doing at 910 AM and they can use the sidewalk to, to head behind the gym and enter the campus to go to the cafeteria for breakfast at 920 or they can wait outside to head to class at 935 again. And I've shared this in the first day packets, but this is the student drop off and pickup map. Um, and so I do want to show you that we have a map here. To the right is the front of the school on Patricia Avenue and shows the flow of traffic going around the car circle. We really want to ask and I strongly suggest that we do not have parents picking up in the parking area and every afternoon I'm going out and I'm trying to catch the parents that are doing that. Um, you can certainly park in a space and get out of your car if you want to. Um, or if you have to come in for a meeting, I want you to be able to park in a space, but that can't be a second parking area. We have teachers who sometimes have to leave for appointments early who need to back out of those spaces. We have families that have students with disabilities that need to use the, uh, the, the, the handicap spots that are in the front and parents are blocking those parents in when they pick up their, their, their students with disabilities. And so we just really need to make sure that we're keeping that area as a parking area and not as a pickup area. And so our parking air, our, our drive through does queue up along the north side of the campus on our service road and come back across the front. That allows us to keep cars off of Patricia Avenue, which was a major issue at the start of the school year. That seems to have gotten better. To the left of the drawing uh, of the graph diagram you're looking at, there is a second car circle off of New York Avenue in the back of the campus that you can also use. And then at the bottom of that diagram is our bus area. And we ask that that is buses only. Please do not enter that area with your vehicle as that is only for buses. If your student arrives late, we want to make sure that they are entering through the main office on Patricia Avenue. For safety purposes, once the school day starts, we only have a single point of entry. For dismissal, once again, uh, the drop off and pickup areas are available both on New York Avenue and on Patricia Avenue. We want students to get in cars along the front of the building in the, in, in the front of the campus. Along the side of the campus, there isn't a good sidewalk. We don't want students waiting there on the side of the campus, so don't pick up your students on the side. Pick them up in the front 
Um, I, I know that it looks like a long line and I know people have things to do, but I can tell you that usually by about 425, that car line is just about fully clear. So if you just have a little bit of patience, it really doesn't take that long. In my other, my children's other schools that they attend, the car line can run 35, 45 minutes. This is a really good, easy car line if everyone just follows the rules. Um, and again, if you're going to pick up your child and you want to park, you may park, but please don't use that parking area as a car circle. Lunches at Dunedin Highland Middle School are free for all students. If you have a student that is eligible or possibly eligible for free and reduced lunch, we do encourage you to use the My School Apps program, which is linked on our website. You do have to reapply every year. And even though everyone does receive free breakfast and lunch at Dunedin Middle School, if you have the My School Apps filled out, you could be eligible for other uh, support with your student, such as instrument rentals being waived in band and orchestra. And sometimes when we have field trips, we have some folks in the community that will pitch in and say they want to help pay for students to attend that field trip. And we will use the students that have filled out those apps on My School Apps. So if you want to have benefits for your students and you're eligible for free and reduced lunch, please fill that out. It also impacts our Title I status. And we want to make sure that our uh, staff members are, that, that we continue to have support from Title I. At Dunning Island Middle School, we use the Pinellas County dress code as our school policy. And so you can access that both on our website or on the PCSB website. One point of emphasis that we have for school safety is no hats, no hoods or head coverings. Um, that is school safety. We really want to be able to identify all of our students uh, on our surveillance cameras or as they move around the campus. We don't want anyone to be able to hide on our campus. It is challenging enough with students wearing masks to be able to identify students sometimes and hats and hoods make it even more difficult. So we want to avoid having hats and hoods. Please help us with that. Another policy that we are using as a point of emphasis is cell phones. Classrooms, hallways and courtyards are no phone zones. Also, uh, headphones and earbuds need to be powered off. That is another safety concern is that if we have an emergency announcement, an emergency drill that is taking place, students need to be able to hear that. And if they have noise canceling headphones and earbuds in, they will not be able to hear that. When I'm talking to students, I often hear them say that I was just turning my phone off or I was just putting my earbuds away. But if they are off and out of sight, you will not be able to you will not be able that that should not be an issue. You should be off and out of sight. You shouldn't be turning it off while you're on campus. And I apologize. The slides fell behind again. I'm trying to keep a look at that. Keep an eye on that. <clears throat> Another new process that we have here at school. And I don't my slide is not showing for that. I'm having a difficult time with with syncing my my slideshow and my PowerPoint. So let me just pause for a minute. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my slideshow down and I'm going to put it back up and see if I can get it up to date by doing that. I would much rather be doing this on the stage with all of you. That is not what I wanted to display. Let's try this again. All right, there we go. This should be synced up now, I think. And I apologize for that confusion. So right now you're looking at a big flow chart, I believe. That's what we should be able to see. And so this flow chart, I know you're not going to be able to read, but I'll be presenting this in a different. I'll be presenting this in a different format um, through Prezi so that I can zoom in all the different elements. We spent some time uh, last school year and also um, throughout the summer working with our community, our parents, and our staff to develop a discipline system for our campus. And um, so on this flow chart, it outlines the processes we have for both rewarding positive behavior and how we deal with misbehavior. I want parents to understand that there are certain behaviors that will be dealt with a disciplinary referral automatically. Serious offenses such as fighting or any violations of law will definitely be automatic referrals, but for more uh, more classroom level behaviors. We have had a lot of input from our, our community and our families that parents want to know and be able to help and stop those behaviors with their child before it rises to the level of a discipline referral. And so teachers are expected now for classroom level behaviors such as talking out of turn or being out of your seat to be making contact with parents at least twice to try to correct the behavior prior to writing a disciplinary referral. That is the biggest major change we have with this. 
Another portion of it that we do want to highlight and I'll highlight in future slides is our positive behavior program where we're going to be emphasizing rewarding students for making positive behavior. But again, I will be making a separate presentation using the app Prezi so that I can go through this flow chart with parents and give a deeper ex explanation of this. But again, we want to make sure that parents are involved in the process of disciplining their children and we know that parents support the discipline of their children and making sure their children are following the school wide expectations. If students are experiencing issues on campus, uh, we have some, an app called Say Something. It is something that is at all Pinellas County schools. The link to Say Something is available at the bottom of our website. It is also available in Clever where the students log in to do all of their work on campus. The Say Something app allows students to make a report that is anonymous if they have any issues on campus. It is a great way for students that are bystanders to support their friends if they have a friend that is experiencing bullying. And again, that link is on our website, but it allows the reporter to be anonymous. But I do ask, I'm getting notification that I have a whiteboard up. Let's try to share this one more time. I am going to share the PowerPoint. So you should see a screen that says, say something now. That is the logo for say something, and that is how our students can know to hit that link in Clever or on the website. We do ask the students do give some details about when and where, kind of the five W's that we learned about in school, who, what, when, where, and why, so that we do have something to go on. Um, I've gotten a few say something reports that say there's a student bothering me in my class, but it doesn't give us a class room number or a period of time or anything that we can really go on to act on. So we do need some information. It is anonymous, but we do need some information to go on to be able to act. And we really want to work to act to get in front of things. One of the things I tell the students every day on the announcements is if you have a conflict with a peer, please seek the assistance of an adult, whether that be stopping to talk to an administrator or a counselor in the hallway, or if you want to be anonymous and report through say something, we want to make sure that the students are heard, but we also want to make sure that our students understand that as 11 and 12 year olds, it's very difficult for them to, to be able to manage and resolve their own conflicts. And so we just want to make sure that students understand that. All right, and I, I see that my slides are working and this is the best way that I can get the slide to show. So that's why you're getting all of the other controls, but at least you can see the slide pretty well from here. So I apologize for the technical glitches. Covering medications, uh, we have a school nurse. Nurse Cindy is her name. Nurse Rose had to, had to move on to a different school. Nurse Cindy is our nurse and she just started, I believe last week. But if you have any over the counter or prescribed medications that need to be given at school, please make sure you contact our school nurse and make sure you schedule an appointment to drop off those medications here at school. If they have to be given at school, we don't want the students to be carrying those in their backpacks. Sports are a, uh, a, a great way to get students involved. I know it's a way that a lot of parents want to get their children involved in school as we return uh, to a full-time school. We run three seasons, volleyball, basketball, and track, and we just learned that we will also be adding a fourth season of flag football for boys and girls. Our current season is volleyball and it is going on now. Basketball tryouts will start in the winter. Track is a spring sport and flag football will also be a spring sport. In order to be eligible for tryouts, students must have school insurance, a current sports physical, and a permission slip filled out. And so I really encourage parents to visit our website and fill that information out now if you know that you have a child that wants to be involved in athletics. The tryouts and notifications will come out very quickly and if you don't have that physical completed, it will prevent your ch child from being able to try out. So please make sure you get that um, completed as soon as possible. Our athletic director is Mrs. Watson and her email address is there. We also need volunteers. I did trump this up in our uh, Title I talk, but uh, we, we do need volunteers, particularly mentors. We will have a Great American Teach-In. It may be virtual this year, but we will have volunteers for that. Um, this note about needing to be on campus the first nine weeks is not valid. Uh, you, you do have to reactivate your volunteer information every year. And if you are a new volunteer, you have to register. Please contact Mrs. Lawrence, our family engage, engagement liaison, and she can let, walk you through all of those processes. Adopt a school is also something we've put out to adopt DHMS. Uh, we want to continue a lot of our innovative programs and our PBIS program and recognizing students for positive behavior, as well as recognizing our staff for the great things that they are doing. And so if you want to donate to the school, we have this adopt a school process 
This form is available on our website and you can fill it out and send it in to our bookkeeper, Mrs. Chesley, and those funds will go to support our entire school community. PCS Connects Distribution. Uh, we have been so lucky as a district to be able to use funds from our, our, our from some of the CARES Act to secure laptops for all middle school students. All students should have a laptop at this time, but right now we have about 300 students who have not turned in paperwork for the laptop. We want parents to be able to turn those in and have students be able to be issued a laptop. We don't have textbooks. Many of the new curriculums that have been adopted are all digital, and so all students need to be able to access the internet while they are on campus. We also want devices to be able to extend the school day through programs like IXL and iReady so students can go home and continue to do work online. Please visit our website if you have not already to fill out the paperwork and see Ms. Rossell, our technology specialist, with that information. COVID protocols. We know that COVID-19 is still prevalent in our community. Masks are strongly encouraged by Pinellas County Schools, but they are optional. Parents have the right to choose their uh, the, 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 what they would like to do to support their child regarding masks, and all, all decisions are respected. Um, we have made some changes uh, that, to support uh, the gathering of students and try to separate students um, by eliminating things like lockers, having one-way hallways, seating charts in the cafeteria, um, keeping our lunch processes from, uh, from our COVID-19 year, staggered dismissals, um, having water fountains closed, so all of these things we've tried to put in place in addition to the things that our district is putting in place. And again, we want to do everything we, to, we want to keep, we can do to keep our families safe. I will also note that our, um, I, I will tell you that our number of students that are being quarantined right now uh, ha has dropped significantly. Uh, I know that things changed uh, recently with the governor, but that's not due to the changes the governor's making. That is due to um, less, less spread on our campus. Um, we, we've had a lot fewer cases recently, and so I'm hoping that we are getting over a little hump here as a school. And I, I know that families that are interested in vaccines are also happy to hear that those could be around the corner if you if you are interested. There are there are not requirements to have children vaccinated, but if you are a parent that is interested in that, that looks like it's around the corner. And I know that will ease a lot of concerns that parents have as well. <clears throat> And I am not sure why I'm still having issues with the whiteboard. I took the whiteboard away. I'm hearing in the chat that I still have slides that are disappearing. Um, let me try this one more time. Because I know I'm also running low on time. That is not a whiteboard. Well, that is the whiteboard. So I'm going to share one more time. Back to the slides. All right, you should see a slide that says PBIS. The PBIS uh, app is available also in Clever. The teachers can give students rewards for positive behavior and students can redeem them for prizes. And we do that every Tuesday in the cafeteria. We have the PBIS store open. They can buy pop tickets for popcorn, which we give out on Wednesdays. They can buy a cafeteria cookie coupon and get a cookie from the cafeteria. We also have a prize box with lots of assorted uh, small trinkets that the students seem to like. We do recess on Fridays, which not many students have taken advantage of. We also have gift certificates from Dodge's Chicken and Jilly Beans Ice Cream, which are just right around the corner from the school. Students can buy a water bottle and they also have access to a game room, which is really cool. We had our first game room session. We have an Xbox One, a PS4, Papa Shot basketball, um, a ping pong table. We have all kinds of things that are available for the students to use on Thursdays if they buy a ticket to the game room during lunch. So again, this is our way of rewarding students and a lot of the students are responding to this and will continue to do this. We've also been hit by TikTok. Uh, I encourage you to be involved and know what your children are doing on social media. Uh, this was a, a tweet that I found from a teacher somewhere else in some other district. I don't know where they're from, but it's like, can there be a TikTok trend where students bring their teachers coffee? Because we've been dealing with a TikTok trend where the students are taking the toilet paper out of the, uh, out of the, out of the uh, restrooms and spraying soap and different things on the floor. And um, I think I'm seeing an ebb to that as well. We've had to consequence some students, uh, but right now the, this, this, the children on TikTok seem to be uh, three steps ahead of the adults. And so please monitor what your children are doing online. Um, we are cracking down on that. We've been monitoring the restrooms and we wanna make sure that uh, we have our restrooms fully stocked. If your student is experiencing a restroom that has been uh, hit by a TikTok uh, wannabe uh, student, please make sure that they walk right across the hall from the restroom to the grade level office. Tell someone in the grade level office, we are restocking the bathrooms constantly. 
but it happens periodically and at times we can't keep up with the students because they do it and we don't know about it until another student discovers it. Um, so please tell your students to make sure they're reporting it to the grade level office or they can use the Say Something app. I know we're hit seven o'clock, so I do want to talk a little bit more. Um, the 10 day count came at, the, at day 10. We have more students in our STEAM program than what was projected. And this is a little bit off. We are actually gaining three teaching units and we will gain that we have gained those units. We've been in interviews. We've been getting people uh, through fingerprinting and through qualifying with the district and making sure their certification is complete. And so starting Wednesday, we'll be adding three teachers primarily to our traditional STEAM program that will help lower classes across the board in that program um, for all of our students. And so we will be doing some schedule changes to bring those teachers on board. It will impact mostly our STEAM students, but all students could see a little bit of a shift. I don't want to I don't want to exclude any group because there could be some shifts to some of the periods as we bring three teachers on. This is a big shift in our schedule and I wish that it could have been done in a different time. But again, we're trying to find workers uh, just like bus drivers. It's hard to find folks to teach at this time once the school year has started, but we have successfully hired three qualified certified teachers, most of them with experience from other states and uh, it's taken a little bit to get here. And so starting on Wednesday, we will have some schedule changes. Um, that we will be announcing and I'll, I'll have more information on my Monday phone call. All right. Another topic here is that our student pictures and I apologize that this slide didn't get saved correctly, so I'm going to make it bigger for everybody. Our student pictures are here. They went in teacher mailboxes, so we're asking the teachers to pass them out ASAP and we have a picture retake day. If your child does not like the picture or more likely if the parent doesn't like the picture, August 7th will be retake day. They'll have to bring the picture back and they must bring it that day with the package to take a retake. I'm down to the last few slides here. If you're not getting my weekly messages, please make sure that you go in uh, in portal and update your contact information so that you have the best phone number and the best email. Uh, I do send an email version, so if you don't like my long messages, you can certainly hang up on me and just read the emails as they come in. And again, we have a school website that we keep up to date and our social media channels. And so we just ask uh, as a staff and as our students to keep moving forward, opening new doors and doing new things because we're curious and curiosity leads us down new paths. This is one of the many inspirational quotes we put on the walls. I thank you for your time tonight. At this time, our teacher uh, uh, department rooms are open. So you have to, if you have questions for the teachers, you can access them there. We also have the teacher. Um, we also have the teacher uh, videos posted on our website. You can view those links and watch the teacher videos to learn information about the classrooms. If you have questions, you can put them in the chat. I'll hang around for a few min minutes on chat. Otherwise, you can join those sessions. Thank you so much for coming out to our virtual open house. Thank you, Ms. Amato. I missed getting those slides in there. We do have a food pantry that is new to us. Ms. Amato's students in the access program are, uh, are the ones who actually are stocking the food pantry and are doing a great job with that. If you have needs or if you know of a family in need, it is open Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. You can come to the front office and we'll be able to load you up with tons of groceries to help support your family. Mrs. Rossell, our tech specialist, is joining us also. So if you have any questions about technology needs for your student, she's here. And thank you, Ms. Rossell, for being available. 